Lauren Taylor's coming up, and she knows how to bring it in a big way. Not only does she know, or does she own the fastest growing military relocation uh, service in the country, but she also has been an, an Inman no, uh, nominated innovator of the year. And this week was named on LA Weekly's top 10 entrepreneurs for 2023. And she is going to rock the stage. With no further ado, Lauren, get your butt up here. Let's go. <laughs> Lauren Taylor. Am I on? Okay, perfect, wonderful. So just get the awkward elephant out of the room. This is new to me. He's gonna be like swooping around behind, so that's weird. Um, I feel like the best way to get past the weird is to just acknowledge that it's weird. You know what also is weird is I have worked with Dan and Kyle for a long time and I was on call with Kyle a while ago and I realized he doesn't know what I do. And so I'm gonna take a minute now because I feel like it could help with some context here. I got licensed in 2014 um, here in San Diego. My husband was Navy. I uh, realized that there was a gap in our service here to help relocate military families. So I positioned a program to fix a problem. PCS Pay It Forward was founded and it funded my entire team largely on that production model, that, which is a great model you should look into. And um, in 2018, we expanded nationwide on a as a licensing program, not a referral program. And we have 100 military spouse and veteran real estate professionals, broker agnostic, operating the program nationwide. In the last three years, we've sold about 12,000 homes through that program. Um, none of them are on my team. I haven't sold a house since 2020, and you'll never see my name on a contract again. Thanks. Thank you. But you don't get a lot of street cred running Facebook groups, okay? So in December 2nd, 2021, I got fed up with losing to people who knew how to run the YouTube channels, quite frankly, like 19 year olds. And so I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this on TikTok. I'm going to like build my brand. I'm tired of losing. I'm going to build my brand. So I went all in on TikTok, decided to post 30 videos in 30 days. That quickly turned into like 90 videos in 30 days because these videos are like four seconds long. And like, that's pretty easy. So I just went for it. I grew 100,000 followers in 12 months. Um, and then in December of last year, I was like, hey, like this works on TikTok. I'm gonna just like go for it and try it on Instagram, right? So I went all in on Instagram on December 12th with 2,500 followers. And yesterday I passed 75,000 followers. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. First of all, it doesn't fucking matter. There are so many more qualified people who should be up here on this stage. I'm so grateful to be here, don't get me wrong, but you guys are brilliant. And you deserve to be seen and you deserve to be heard. And there are so many incredible people in here that I hope you take action on what I tell you today because your message deserves to reach a million people. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I use cont uh, data to, to develop my content strategy. Right now, a lot of us are making decisions based on feeling, right? And based on feeling, it feels good, I get likes, I get follows, and that's how we measure success. Over the last 45 days, 50, over the last 55 days, I've also driven about $600,000 of revenue through my Instagram channel. You can, you can clap for that one, that one's good, right? <laughs> that one matters, that one actually matters, right? It doesn't matter how many likes and followers we have. It doesn't matter how many millions of views that we get. If we can't feed our family, none of it matters. So I want to help you shift your focus from a view influencer type growth strategy to an engagement relationship building growth strategy. Will you guys allow me to do that with you today? Yes. Hell yeah, let's do this. So this is the continuous content improvement cycle, okay? The CCIC, as we call it in the industry. Um, we start with quantity, then we move to quality, and then we move to strategy. And I'm gonna assume that there's a good portion of you out there who are already creating content, so you have some sort of quantity. So we're gonna start with quality, and then we're gonna work our way around. So how do we determine quality in the content world? Number one, we don't. Our audience does. Some of you guys are sitting on drafts right now on your phone. You guys are great content creators. You are really shitty content distributors. You have videos you've never posted. The video I never posted, 
I sat on for four weeks, ended up getting 2.6 million views on TikTok, and took me from 10,000 followers to 50,000 followers in 30 days. The one that was in my drafts. So number one, we don't determine quality. Our audience does. So it's not possible to have a crappy piece of content in your drafts, because you don't know. And in reality, if we were to post that video and it's bad, no one's going to see it anyway. That's, the, that's how we define bad. Like 300 people saw it. And you know what? They didn't even see it. They don't even remember. You didn't even exist. You were a swipe, and it didn't matter. And I know this because I work with content creators all the time, and I ask them, well, what about this video? They're like, I don't even remember it. If they don't remember it themselves, the person who created it and posted it, what makes you think the person who is scrolling is going to remember it? They don't remember it. You don't exist. You post bad content, you don't exist. Just don't get canceled, OK? Second, quality is found through quantity. There's no other way to find it. So we have to post enough pieces of content to see what resonates best with our ideal audience. Quality is a piece of content that drives the desired response from our ideal audience. So if we are shifting our thought process, OK, sorry. <laughs> if we're shifting our thought process from being driven towards views, right, then what is the desired response? Desired response is, oh, thank you for switching that. I'm realizing that that wasn't up there now. <laughs> um, the desired response is someone getting into conversation with me, right? There's maybe, what, 800 people in this room? Some of you guys aren't posting videos because you're scared of getting 300 views. That's like half of this room. If you could get a message out to half of this room right now, how powerful would that be? If you did that once and three people went out into the lobby and pulled you aside and were like, you're incredible, I want to work with you, how powerful would that be? For me, the desired response that I found, yeah, I love people going through my link in bio. All I want is a message. All I want is a conversation. Conversation equals conversion. If you message me, game is over. Go ahead and message me, it's fine. <laughs> but in all sincerity, you guys are great on the phones. Let's get you in more conversations. So quality is a piece of content that drives the desired response from your ideal audience. And number four, quality is found in our analytics. It's not possible to look back and say, this piece of content did great. These five pieces of content did great. If you're doing this right, you're pushing out 100 pieces of content in 30 days, you shouldn't remember. Especially with delayed algorithms these days, some of those pieces are going to take three or four weeks to even catch up. So we have to look into our analytics to determine where the highest pieces of quality are, especially if it's not decided by views. So this is the LT content funnel. And while some individuals would coach you and teach you that the, you know, obviously we need to put out quantity, we need the number of posts, right? But that our success is driven by views and our success is driven by followers, I define success by link in bios, messages, appointments, opt-ins, and ultimately clients. So if we're going to determine what is the best type of content that gets that desired outcome, Forget the, the video that got a million views that didn't do anything for us. I think we've all, maybe we all haven't had one of those, but a lot of people have had one of those. But what's the one that actually drove the desired response? So I think this is really interesting. This is actually a timeline of my last, uh, since December 2nd on Instagram. These are my most viewed videos. You can see here I've had about 17 million impressions. Here's like a, a secret sauce, guys. Like, if people don't know you exist, they can't buy and sell houses with you. So do you think that it increases my odds of gaining a client if 17 million people have seen my face? It's better, right? So these videos have driven the, the majority of the growth on my account. Views do matter, right? This is highly relatable content for my ideal audience. It is the views definitely drive the followers, OK? The followers do validate you as an expert. That is helpful. But ultimately, this is usually where agents stop, is that we create kind of selfish-based content that makes us feel good. It's our ego that, that gets into play. And then we don't do the second part of the equation. If we get all of the views, which is top of funnel, right? what's the next part in the equation? Well, we have to go back, and we have to create videos that are going to actually move them through the pipeline. They're going to position us as an expert. One of the reasons why we're struggling with getting not enough views on your content 
it's because all we're doing is talking about real estate. Realtors love talking about real estate. Do you, like, there's a very small segment of the people in your city who are looking to buy and sell right now. And one of the reasons why we were so successful with PCS Pay It Forward and, and Savvy Home Buyer is because we've been determined to sit at the top of funnel. While you guys are all fighting over Zillow leads, there's like, I want to work with someone who's going to buy today. I want to work with them before they even know they want to buy. And there is a great uh, little story I have about this. When I got uh, my Basset Hound, Bacon, <laughs> that's his real name. He had that name when we got him. Uh, when we got Bacon, um, the moment I brought him home, him home and started posting pictures on Facebook, what do you think was all over my Facebook newsfeed? What? Bass sounds? No. Carpet cleaners. Steam cleaners. <laughs> Bissell is brilliant. Why? Because dogs are messy, and dogs have messes. And so statistically, I'm going to market to people who get a dog, not someone who is looking for a carpet cleaner. So while you guys are all fighting over the people who are looking for a carpet cleaner out here with Zillow, I'm like, man, I've been in relationship with them for months because I stepped up the consumer funnel. You have to step up the, the content into a place where we can develop relationships with people before they want to buy and sell, not when they want to buy and sell. When they want to buy and sell is a fantastic paid ad strategy. But I guess what I didn't tell you guys, because I told Dan I would take this from 30 minutes to 20 minutes, I am going to stick to that, is that every single thing that I told you right there, the 12,000 uh, 12, buyers, $600,000 of revenue, was on a $0 ad span, spend, completely organic. If you are going to build an organic lead generation system, you have to step up the consumer funnel. You have to widen your top of funnel and talk about things that matter to your ideal audience other than the thing that you want to get into business with them on. So keep your eyes on the screen because this is views. This is probably what drove the majority of my followers, but this is leads. Are there any videos that overlap? None of my top viewed videos drove the most leads through my funnel over the last 90 days. Is everyone seeing like a hole in your content strategy right now? So if we're making decisions based on emotion and not based on, based on data, that's why everyone's running around saying you can't drive a meaningful pipeline through social media. It's not consistent. It's not reliable. I'd rather pay $500 to, you know, for a client acquisition. OK, great. Every time I post a video right now, I make $3,500. So do I want to post one video today, or do I want to post 10? Here's the best part. If you're familiar, and I like, love these like, bigger theories, if you're familiar with like, the Gallatin board, if you're familiar with like, the law of chaos and distribution, what happens? What happens the bigger the numbers get? the more true they fall into a bell curve. So the bigger the numbers get, the more videos that you post, the more that these numbers hold true. And that's why we need quantity in order to find the quality, because some of us, we're working off a sample size right now that we just don't have enough information to make any decisions that are going to mean anything on the back end. So these are the videos who drew over the majority of my leads. And this is, let's talk about how we use that information to then drive our strategy. So first of all, sorry, I wanted to go back here for a minute. Um, in every single platform you run, okay, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, on Twitter. I launched a Twitter account just to use it for Instagram. It was solid, by the way. You guys should do that. John Shep, I got some great one-liners. I was like writing down tweets for him. Um, <laughs> um, so, um, damn, now I lost my train of thought. No overlap. no overlap. Keep going. Throw it at me. On every platform you run, thanks, we're going to edit that out later. It's the beauty of movie magic, I suppose. On every platform you run, there is analytics on the back end. There is an incredible whole panel that is going to show you all this. Even better, there's a little export button. Even better, go to that 
Excel CSV spreadsheet that it's gonna make for you, copy and paste that bad boy over ChatGPT and say, what is the common, act as a analyst, act as a social media expert and identify successful patterns that have led to the most growth and engagement on these series of videos. Did everyone write that down? Everyone's staring at me, write it down. What's ChatGPT? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need my 30 minutes back. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so you're gonna export it. You're going to get that information into a spreadsheet. You're then going to copy it, okay? Just copy it, top like 15 videos. You're going to take over ChatGPT and you are going to say, act as a data analyst and a social media expert and determine or tell me what are the most successful patterns you see in this data. And they'll tell you what to do. And then you're gonna follow that up with, please provide me 100 video prompts for the information above and I just solved your content problem. Your face is amazing right now. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> but that's the thing, guys. Y'all be playing checkers. Time to step up, let's play some chess. Let's double down. You wanna know the even more mind-blowing thing and I was not gonna share this on stage, but I'm gonna just do it, because why not? Um, you can do this on any competitor in the industry right now. I can do it on any of you right now. Actually, I did it on some of you before I came. Message me and find out if it was you. <laughs> All right, so we have to then I, carry those strategies forward, right? Give enough quantity to get enough data to see what's working and what's not working. We can look at our competitors, see what's working for them. Who is someone who leads the space in content creation? Would you say Gary Vee? Wonderful. He grew by 1.9% last year. Oh, not so confident now, right? Mel Robbins? grew 60%. She grew her audience from 1.9 million followers to 3.3 million followers. Her post per follow ratio is like 10 times greater than Gary Vee's right now. So if you're looking for someone to model your content strategy after, sorry Gary, time to hire a new team. I don't know what to tell you. But that's the beauty of analytics, right? We can't see that with our naked eye. So find these successful patterns, identify what they are, and that's what dictates your strategy moving forward. One of my favorite, so I'll, I'll put that up somewhere. Everyone get it? Three, two, one, we're going. Okay. <laughs> now here's the best part. I don't even want you, I don't even want you to then go back to ChatGPT 30 days from now and be like, give me more, give me more, give me more. No, we're gonna reimagine that content. It's gonna be a tweet because now y'all have Twitter accounts just like LT Speaks. She has 26 followers, they're diehard fans, okay? <laughs> I'm not here to grow on Twitter. She's one of them right there, I love it. Um, <laughs> but that tweet, the reason why I did that is because I was studying Alex Hermosi, who's an Alex Hermosi fan. Awesome. He grew 239% over the last 12 months. And I was like, well, Alex is getting a lot of views off these things, I wonder why. I don't know, it works. So I did it, and it worked. And so I took that tweet, I turned it into a reel, which by the way takes less than 10 seconds. Then my team, my VA team, takes that reel, and they put it into a graphic, which then, I don't really care how much time it takes them because, you know, it's not my time. Um, <laughs> and then, what was performing across multiple platforms is these videos, these like, you know, quotes that are going with the, the videos in the back, the beautiful trending sounds of the like, beautiful like, nature things. So one tweet, one single sentence that Lauren Taylor wrote herself one morning while getting ready, and shuffling her kids out the door, turns into a multitude of different pieces of content served across multiple platforms. Not only that, but then we can identify like the evergreen videos that we're putting out and we can reuse them. So this video I actually posted on 123. I posted again on 7, or on 2-7, February 7th, and I do plan on posting again here in like a week. This video has driven the majority of my growth and I'm gonna do it for you right now, ready? So I was videoing myself, you have to document yourself from now on, okay? You're recording everything you're doing. We don't have time to go into it, so that's, that's how we're doing this. Um, you record everything you're doing. The video I was doing right here was, hey, text on screen stops the scroll. Teaser gets them in the description. Has anyone seen this video? Some people are shaking their heads like I've seen it. Teaser gets them in the description. 
You drop as much value in the description as possible, and in the background, that audio is just looping in the background. That is a loophole that's happening on Instagram right now that is giving me massive amounts of growth. Okay? So all you have to do is give them enough value to get them in your description, and that is where the gold is. We keep them there, it increases the watch time, it increases the reach. It's the same video. It can be posted multiple times. Not only that, but we can repurpose this video, because we've already proven that it is a powerful piece of content. This video has driven more opt-ins into my funnel than any other video. So why would I not put it into my email list? Why would I not put it in my private group? Why would I not post it as a blog? Anyone here who does paid ad strategy, why would you not pump $1,000 behind that thing? So as you guys find these successful pieces of content, I want you to create what is called your content capsule. And if you're a woman, you know what a capsule wardrobe is. It is something that goes with everything. It is a timeless classic. And that's what your content capsule is. It is legitimately evergreen content that has performed a specific response for you that can be used over time. This is the way that I organize my content capsule. I, um, this is my checklist that I use uh, of what I need to post. Um, and then also I have that linked to, um, I have that linked to small videos so my team knows exactly what to do. I have a checklist like this. My team has a checklist like this. It also determines a content calendar like the one you see up here on the screen. But you have to then take that top performing 10% of, qual of um, quality pieces put them in your pocket and reuse them. That's how this gets easier. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about reimagining it and repurposing it. So these are the keys to quality. We have a minute left, so we're going to go fast, guys. This is one of the things that I need to change for all of you. If you go out and pay someone $20,000 tomorrow to hire a production team to put a purple light behind you and give you a fucking script, I'm going to pull my hair out. It's not you. That's not your superpower, OK? That'll get you 80,000 followers and get you $10,000 you owe someone and zero deals. Believe me, I'm getting the messages, OK? Instead, why don't we just pour into the people that we already love and support? Why not just side record ourselves having the conversations that we're already having, having and capture the authentic moments of brilliance that you already have? Who here has had a moment where it's like you say something and so you're like, damn, that was really smart. And then you're like, god, I wish someone was recording that. Let's start doing that. Record yourself while you are Zooming, while you are talking to your team. Send it off to a VA. Send it off to your 19-year-old who knows how to edit video. They will edit it into a 15 or 20-second clip, and it will turn into a 15-second clip that drives $600,000 of revenue through your pipeline. It's proven. The other option you have is to create. I'm going to take three more minutes, and I'll be done, I promise. The other option you have is to create. And this is different. I'm, I don't want you to produce. I am underproduced to a fault. I am imperfectly flawed in every way. Even for people who join any coaching program I have, I'm sorry, there's still pet spelling errors. I'm, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. I've tried for 37 years, it's not gonna change. Okay? So don't produce, create. Record yourself doing everyday activities at the office, doing work, meeting with your team. And do text on screen with what we call B-roll, which is that video of everyday activities. We plug it in with a trending sound. We tap into the emotional side and the, the very relatable side of the ideal client that we want to be in relationship with. And that's how we can create content at a highly scalable level, opposed to hiring a production crew to fire, hire you or, or to follow you around and setting aside hours in your calendar to record your content. So here's four simple ways to build your B-roll. You can pull videos you already have. Literally put them in the iPhone album, in your phone. You can create a schedule to add more weekly um, B-roll, or to add more B-roll on a weekly basis. Personally, I try to record two minutes of B-roll a day. That's it, of just me already working. Now, the funny thing is, someone sent me their B-roll, and they're like, <laughs> I'm like, no, no. What you're already working, you don't have to like, set yourself up for this. Whatever you're doing, just record yourself doing it, OK? You can also scrub professional content databases. So even like Vimeo, YouTube, there are spaces that you can download local-based content, property walkthroughs, beautiful desert views, street light views, right, of your local area. And you can use those to supplement your personal content. 
Or you can hire someone locally because 50% of this content doesn't even need your face, quite frankly. You need walking into the, you need East County Eats, you need walking into the restaurant. Look at this burrito. Wow, this is delicious. You guys should come here. Follow me for more burrito content in San Diego. It's top performing content in San Diego. Breakfast burritos are my love language. Okay, so I wanted to leave you guys with a little text on screen because um, <laughs> I don't know what happened over the last 90 days. I made it on some list, and so now every Instagram guru is like teaching this like B-roll on screen, and they're doing it very poorly, so can I just help us all do this better? What do we, this video, this text on screen, okay? What's, what's the words that come to mind when you see this? First of all, it's 10 times better than any non-video you didn't post, just a heads up, okay? <laughs> This video will outperform your non-video every day of the week. So let's start there. But some constructive feedback, right? It's a bit generic. Re looking at this, is this a bit generic? Does it uh, bring in any sort of emotion? No. Okay. So one of two things happens. Uh, they have to decide to like you or dislike you. And for those of you guys who like to be liked, you've got to get over this. Even being on stage, I totally agree with John. You're either going to walk away and be like, this lady's full of shit. Or, yeah, she's pretty awesome. Maybe I'll try that. But here's the thing. You know enough about me to form an opinion about me. And if you are not getting the same response on your videos, then it's like you don't even exist. OK, so this is generic. How do we create a relationship with someone? We tap in to pain, fear, inspiration, motivation. It has to be an emotional response. So this is the LT version of that video, OK? So before is very technical, very generic. Like these are the things that you're going to see in your inspection report. Well, what about the things that you're going to be saved from? This future pain. My clients don't feel this pain. You want to know why? Because we have a defensive strategy. And if you just read my teaser about the eight defensive strategies that we use to protect our clients by, from this type of cost, now they're in my description, right? So. Is it their current pain that we're, we are taking them out of? Is it their future pain that we're saving them from? Or are we tapping into some sort of pain that they had in the past that we can help bring them out of? But either way, you cannot build a relationship with someone on social without having some sort of emotional connection with them, some sort of emotional response. So we started with quality, right? How you find your quality. We're going to go to our analytics. We're going to export it. We're going to take it to ChatGPT and do the steps that I told you. How do we do our strategy? That's going to determine our strategy moving forward based on what was top performing. We can even pull our competitors' content, and that will also determine it moving forward. You can also look at Google Trends. You can also look at Pinterest. I mean, there's a million different places you can look for content strategy, guys. But all of those are going to put you in the right space in the right realm. And then lastly, when it comes to quantity, you have to, to commit that today is going to change. You're going to put out 100 pieces of content in the next 30 days. Because here's the thing I didn't tell you. Those 17 million views, that's $600,000 of rev revenue, 72,000 followers in LA Weekly's top entre 10 entrepreneurs to watch. I'm going to get that tattooed on me, right? That means a lot. Um, that was all driven off of 17 minutes of video, average of six seconds. Less than 10 videos, I spoke a word. 